trend polynomial gridding fits a three-dimensional polynomial equation to the control point data and constructs a grid based on this equation. As shown within the trend polynomial menu, the order of the polynomial determines how many flexures or bending moments the surface will have. A first order polynomial is a flat surface such as a regional dip or a hydrogeological gradient. A second order polynomial produces a single flexure such as a horizontal or plunging anticline or syncline or even a depositional basin. A third order polynomial has two bending moments that might be used to model a complex structure such as an anticline syncline system. The remaining fourth, fifth, and sixth order polynomials are rarely used and we recommend for reasons that will soon become apparent that you avoid using them. The automatic option at the top of the menu will generate all six of the polynomials and choose the most reasonable polynomial that correlates best with the control points. To illustrate the polynomial fitting, we'll start out with a set of control points. As mentioned earlier, the first order polynomial produces a plane. In this case, the plane is dipping to the northwest. The second order polynomial is producing a curved surface similar to the flank of a dome that is also dipping to the northwest. The third order polynomial mimics the northwestern flank of an anticline. The fourth order polynomial has produced a basin to the northwest, a dome to the south, and a very steep gradient upwards to the southwest. The fifth order polynomial has produced some nonsensical flexures at every corner of the model. To illustrate how trend surface polynomials can be used to project trends into areas without control points, consider this example. A triangulation based grid will be confined to the area of control despite the obvious trend. Generic inverse distance slightly extends the trend. Automatic Krieging doesn't project the trend. Whereas manual Krieging does a much better job but terminates the projection within a short distance. The directional automatic method goes farther, as does the directional manual. But a trend surface polynomial will project infinitely, making it a useful tool for projecting trends into areas without control when used judiciously. We'll be revisiting trend polynomials later on in this series when describing the polyenhance option, which uses polynomials to enhance the regional trend while using other algorithms to model the local perturbations. Advantages? Trend polynomial gridding will project trends into areas with no data. Trend polynomial gridding shows regional structures otherwise hidden by high frequency features. Disadvantages? It does not work well with data sets that have no discernible regional trend. It does not honor the control points and it can produce unrealistic flexures when attempting to fit the polynomials to the control points.